Today's Lunch with Doug podcast is produced by the Music Exerbia Project and made possible by these great businesses. The second edition shop located at 500 East Cherry Street in fabulous Nevada, Missouri. Karen McNair, the friendly neighborhood nutritionist at 269-267-4644. The Harry Frog Graphics at 150 North Commercial or call them at 417-381-1077. The Boutique Marketplace, located at 500 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. The Nevada Coin, at 123 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. The Gamers Fusion, 617 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. The Craft Tea, find them on Food Truck Pub or on Facebook. The Impact Graphics, at 14144 East Highway 54 or call them at 417-283-2056. The Nevada Tobacco and Liquor Store at 125 West Cherry Street on the south side of the Nevada Square. And coming soon, the Red Cherry Alley at 125 West Cherry Street in fantastic Nevada, Missouri. I'm your host, Dangerous Doug Harper. Thank you for spending your lunchtime with me. Back on another episode of Lunch with Doug. And as promised, on the phone with me, Eric Raytan. How are you, Eric? I'm doing well, Doug. Thank you. Uh, you are in Arkansas. Not Arkansas. You're in Arizona right now. <laughs> I, I, I better still be in Arizona. I'm on the desert around here. <clears throat> the, yeah, no, I, I am in Arizona. The other A state. It, yeah, exactly. it has been a minute since I spoke with you. Last time I saw you in person, you were playing in the good town of Nevada, Missouri at the Jim's Roadhouse. Wow, yeah, that was a few years ago, wasn't it? How long ago has that been now? Three? Uh, well, that, that was uh, 2020, Man. if I remember correctly. Yeah, so about three years ago. Man. Or four years, three and a half, four years ago. Time gets by so quickly. But you're still out there doing the thing. You're still out there playing shows. You haven't stopped since, basically. No, I'm, I'm still out here doing something. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, but I'm still out here. <laughs> well, you're playing, you're playing music, man. You're, you're touring the world. I am, yeah. I'm... I am uh, definitely playing a little music out here and seeing some places, so it's a lot of fun. Well, I guess recently what really caught my attention, not that I didn't want to catch up with you anyway, but what really caught my attention is you're playing uh, a, like a festival of school buses in in Arizona. Is that right? That's what's going on? That's correct. Um, don't quote me on this, but I think it's the largest school bus festival uh <clears throat> In the world, if I remember correctly, if I've seen that right. So, yeah. I mean, I would believe that. I saw pictures, and I was like, this is amazing. And yeah, so, it is. so like, are you the only artist? Are there many artists? What's what's shaking out there, man? No, there's, uh, there'd be, um, when I was there, there was four different acts the day I was there. I think there was, I've been here, I think this is my fourth day, and I think there was about three days of music. So I think there was about 10 or 12 acts total throughout the throughout this festival throughout this i was playing on i think it was called like the folk kind of like the folk stage wow. yeah well, that is just so cool so you were yeah. you've 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 arrived at, as folk musician right <laughs> <laughs> pretty much what it was was a guy uh husband and wife they built on the side of their bus they built three stages on there and so when they're driving they just pull them up by cable when they're driving down the road but then when they get somewhere they just let the uh they just winch the stages down so you're playing right on the side of the bus so they have three on the side of the bus and then one stage on top of the bus so it's pretty cool setup that is very cool that's very cool (laughs) and i I hear some i hear some background excitement so you're you're staying there tonight right and this is like you're camped out for this yep for this final day it's uh I don't think, I, I think one of the stages still has music today, but uh, the stage where I'm at, they have comedians tonight. So I'm kind of looking forward to just relaxing and watching that. Man, that is awesome. All right, so <laughs> let's catch up the listeners. They're probably, some of them are lost. And they don't maybe know who, they might not even know who I am at this point. They're like stumbling onto <laughs> this podcast, like, who are these people? So, sure. so Eric, you've been playing basically full-time music I mean, you might do some other stuff too, but really, that's your main gig. You've been doing that for like what seven years now? Yeah, it's it's kind of a hard to tell when I quit my 
day job and I kind of just phased completely out of that. I went from a full-time day job and doing the music part-time into part-time work and then playing my music as much as I can. And then it just led into total 100% about probably four years ago, I quit my part-time day job and I just focused completely 100% on music. So it let me really get out and experience a lot more this travel it's very exciting it's it, it, from 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 an onlooker stance i see you're out there you're playing all over the place you're here you're there you're everywhere and uh and you play you just you not only do you play like you entertain people with uh songs that they know you've also put out an album you had um a few years ago it was cool i got a copy you sent me a copy it was fantastic so you're just out there doing like this one man show one man guitar you kind of got a stomp thing you stomp still right yeah i got a couple i added a couple more drums so i got uh i'm playing a couple drums with my feet now and uh yeah that's my songwriting's been kind of in a slump lately i haven't been doing as much as i should have that but actually this festival there was uh at the folk stage where I was playing, there was a few other acts that are really into writing their own music. So it kind of inspired me to hopefully light the flame again. So I get back into my songwriting. I am excited about another album. I really did. I really (laughs) dug your last album. It was, that's a lot of work though, isn't it? Yeah. Oh oh my (laughs) gosh. That's, I, I think I would almost just put out singles from here on out. You know what I mean? That's the thing now anyway, though, really. Yeah. So, well, yeah, when you're when you're a solo musician and you're trying to get in there and then you're trying to play as many of the instruments that you possibly can play yourself and try to write the music and it it just turns into kind of I shouldn't say an overwhelming process. I'm glad I did it, but I don't know if I have the time or energy to spend to do another full-time al- album. You know, if I had other musicians playing with me and I could say, "Hey, bass player, you learn this part," you know, and kind of break it up that way but when you're trying to learn all the instruments and play them all it kind of turned into a lot so i think i'll do one one song at a time from here on out maybe you should look at the nashville fold you know they just basically the songwriter will write the song and then send down the demo to them and then the then the studio will get all hire all the musicians they'll get it all ready to go for them and then the 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 artist just kind of comes in and and does their parts and then boom they do it and it's really fantastic exactly yeah that's probably what i we should look into now of course that would probably be a better process of course not cheap to do it that way by any means but you get all the best artists that are playing on all the you know all the up and coming artists exactly. out of that you yeah, get the no, best of the best doing it that way and even Willie yeah. Nelson did an album like that in Nashville. Really? And he was notorious for having his own guys, you know, but he did one like that. And, he did uh, with the session players. Okay. Yeah, sure did. Uh, yeah, no, I, that's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, if, if Willie endorses it, if Willie does it, I mean, it's good. You know what I'm saying? Be all right. I hear you. <laughs> the Willie yeah. stamp of approval. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So what else have you been up to? I mean, where have you been playing at? I know uh, you was up in Minnesota a while back. Now you're out in uh, Arizona, and you got kind of yeah, like little pockets, right? You kind of got your little places you kind of rotate through each year. Of, um, yeah, this year I was kind of broke out of that a little bit. I was used to going over to the Phoenix Mesa area for the last, I'd say, seven winters and basically focusing a lot of my attention over there. But this year I decided to travel more. So I've been in my van now for, I must have left Minnesota uh, the end of December. So however long that's been, three weeks or so, I've been in the van um, traveling. I just got done playing three shows at the, it's called the RTR. It's the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous. It's kind of, I believe that's the largest gathering of nomads in the United States, uh, and that's in Quartzsite, Arizona. So I just got done playing three shows over there, and then I packed up out of there, and I came over here and played this one show at uh, Schooly Palooza, and then I have some more set up in the next month or so over Lake Havasu area and a few in the Phoenix Mesa area, so... Yeah, I'm just actually I, I really enjoy traveling and I do a lot of hiking nowadays. So I'm always looking for different places to hike. And um, I'm just checking out my van today. Um, I think I'm going to add a rack and then put a mountain bike on there so I can start doing a little bit more mountain biking while I'm out. Just 
kind of break things up and see some different areas. Yeah, that sounds exciting, man. And that that exercise is really good for your vocals too. Totally. Added bonus. <laughs> I've, I've noticed that as I age, there's like, it gets less forgiving. You 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 can get away with less mistakes and not, and that's one thing with playing in the desert for anybody that is out here or thinking of coming out here, it's very dry. So singing out here, it does pose a little more of a challenge because, you know, there's no humidity. It's uh, like if, if you are a singer, you know, carry a humidifier with you or tank up on the water that's what i do because it it is definitely dry out here people will notice that yeah well and i noticed yeah. you in the past just dealing with you and and, and when you come come up and played shows you were very meticulous about you know spacing things out not overdoing your voice and stuff which is really a good plan it's a real good plan but i noticed you're very meticulous about that you know keeping your fitness up keeping your not overdoing your voice and these kind of things so that's that's exactly. good for the long haul. Well, it was back in, I think, 2017, and I, I had a vocal hemorrhage where basically the artery in your vocal cord, I exploded mine. So it was a series of uh, restrict, like no talking for about two weeks. Then it was just a little bit of talking, and it was a lot of uh, vocal rehab to get that built back up. It took me months of uh, not playing shows and figuring things out so i really had to after that i knew if, as i'm aging more and now i'm in my 50s i'm like well if i want to keep on going with this i really have to you almost have to treat your body as the whole instrument you know what i mean you got to keep up with the stretching and the hydration and um just you got to do it a little bit smarter than i would have done it in my 20s and 30s so but so far so good <laughs> Yeah, no, I get that. Now I didn't realize you had had an uh, an incident on that. I just knew that you was doing that. So that was that was maybe part of your rehabilitation at that time on your, it, your vocals. It really was. It took a good year to two years to really even just gain the uh, uh, I don't know what's the word I'm looking for. Just the confidence to sing again because it is a it's a it's a little bit scarier of a thing than a person would imagine when. When that it, when that blows up in your or however you want to say it, when it uh, when the artery goes in your vocal cord, and then you you go through a series of ENT visits where they they stick a camera and all it goes up through your nose and down your throat and it checks your vocal cord, and when they expose your vocal cord, they're not they're never sure what kind of if the vocal cord will go back in the correct shape, and if it doesn't, well then you can look at a series of surgeries but that what they say was going to be about fifty thousand dollars but on my last uh visit in there the my ent ear nose and throat specialist he said well you got lucky your vocal cord went back into its regular shape so it was able to close and you know it didn't cause any more injury he said but you know you 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 could do it again if you keep on you know not taking as good of care of it as you should. So I really got serious on my health with that after that. Yeah. That would be, that would be scary. <laughs> That's a, yeah. And especially then you can't talk like they're like, okay, now to rehabilitate, you can't say uh, So like that's... that. It was, it was the weirdest <laughs> feeling. I mean, it was, it was such a secluded feeling after I remember day nine or 10, I just felt really claustrophobic in my home. I lived alone, and it was just like I actually went out in the for a walk. I was just so like almost hyperventilating, and I went out for a walk. And it wasn't that I was thinking about death or anything, but at the same time, I was walking down the street, and I was like, "Man, if a car just runs into me now, <laughs> I would be okay with that." I mean, as bad as that sounds, but that actually was how I felt. It was it was a really uh, I don't know. It was a really strange feeling not being able to talk for at all for two weeks. Yeah, so singers got to take care of those voices. Um, I know different people. I've after having it, Adele went through a couple of those, and Steven Tyler and Sam Smith. So it's kind of common in singers, but you just you just need to really watch it and learn better technique and not overdo it. Well spoken, man. Well spoken. And then I've yeah. talked to some people that had had COVID, and a lot of them are talking about how getting their voice back after COVID was a challenge, also. 
Did you oh, yeah. experience anything like that? You know, knock on wood, I not that I know of. I don't think I, I don't. Well, if I ever had COVID, I mean, I've been pretty healthy for the last three or four years. So if I had it or not, I don't, I don't believe I have. But I mean, who knows? It could have been just a really mild form here and there. But um, nothing I've ever had to experience firsthand, no. Well, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. So now uh, let's talk about like how to get in touch with you. Let's say there's someone listening that wants to book you at their venue. Is there, you got a website or a contact? How do we do that? I do. Um, my website is www.ericwrighton.com, and that is spelled uh, E-R-I-C period R-E-I T-A-N dot com. They can get a hold of me on my website. Uh, that's probably works the best. Or, you know, Instagram or Facebook works just as just fine as well. Okay. And then that album we were talking about, you can listen to that on, like, Spotify and iTunes or Apple Music, right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's available on just about all platforms out there. So, same, uh, yeah. Same way to get that. Well. Yeah. So, same spelling. And uh, find your tunes, listen to it. And then I, yeah. last time, I didn't go before I talked to you today, but I had been to your website before, and you had some really cool samples of you, like, playing live in, like, some of the casinos and stuff. Is some of that still yeah. up, up on the website? It is. There's, like, some just some, I would say, six to ten minutes of sample music on there, and then a few uh, just home projects I did as well. So, yeah, there's some music out there. I haven't put anything on for mm, last year or two. Kind of uh, when you're traveling a lot, it's it it doesn't give you a lot of time to do that when you're traveling alone. Um, sure. So I gotta. That's something I I don't really enjoy the. I shouldn't say the the promotion side of it. I don't do much. I don't do as much as I should on the internet and promoting. So that's one thing I could definitely work on. Well, you know, you you actually are in luck though because I looked at the stats when the rolled around the first year. I was checking out like how was my twenty twenty three here on lunch with Doug, and we actually had fifty six percent of our listeners our new discovery. So there's a lot of people coming in and discovering us for the first time. That's why I was joking about people might not know, it, you know. So so you're probably in the clear because if they they haven't been to the website yet, it's brand new to them, you know. But yeah, definitely. I guess what I was getting at is, um, you know, they could see a sample, and they, really, your show is really kind of the silver bullet for music, and I say that because you kind of do everything. You are going to play some some genre from the, you're going to play some like late 60s, you're going to play some 70s, you're going to play some 80s, you're going to play some 90s, you're going to play some now, you know, so you've got uh, every other song is completely different, and you're not going to stick to one genre, right? I uh, no, not yeah. I'm, I'm definitely all over the board on that. I never show up with a particular song list in mind. I yeah, you might hear a Jim Croce song, and it might go into a Guns N' Roses song, and it might go into a Willie Nelson song. So you know, it just changes whatever <laughs> whatever comes to mind next. I guess is kind of what I do, or just I guess kind of watch the crowd to play it by ear. I guess that seems to work well for me. Yeah, and well, and I understand that actually that yeah, people dig that because they don't want to hear something the same all night. And and your past, you you had told me that at one point you kind of ran a mobile DJ gig, so you kind of got an experience in kind of like how to do the music and how to really help the crowd have a good time. Yeah, I believe I that probably I did that for about twenty years, um, and that was kind of I used to do it quite a bit. I was a mobile DJ, and then. As my live playing kept on going, which I've done since a young, since I was young, young, um, I kind of phased out of the DJing. But yeah, that has definitely probably helped me uh, as far as reading a crowd, reading a room. It probably really helped quite a bit more than more than I would have thought previously until you brought it up. <laughs> yeah. Well, I just noticed that in your show when I saw you play, you have a really energetic show and you have a really nice um, way to like come up with a fast song, kind of bring down with a slower song right where the mood really needs it. And the, a lot of times the crowd, they're not thinking about that. They're just trying to have a good time. But you're looking at them saying, OK, well, now it's time to to bring this one up now. Well, maybe they want to dance a slow song. I better slow it down. You've got that kind of you're paying exactly. attention to that. 
And yeah, it, yeah, well, yeah, I, I appreciate you noticing that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's something that is always in, probably in, like, you as well, a lot of musicians' minds, you're always trying to read the crowd one step ahead or a song or two ahead. Yeah, well, and it, it really enhances their experience uh, for the people that are going. And this is a good one for if there's a venue that's listening that's thinking, like, oh, maybe we should have Eric come down. Um, and play. You're real personable. You're a nice guy. You you uh, you talk to people when you're on break and and get along with people real well. And then and you know that also adds it makes them feel you know if they come in and it's it, maybe at early in the night it might be slower and it's kind of stuffy and they're not sure. And especially if they've came alone, you know. And then you're like, hey, it's cool. Well, now they know someone and then you're maybe interacting from the cr- from the stage with them, and it starts to bring a conversation into the room. And then then everybody then then they start talking amongst themselves and now now everybody in the room is friends and and you know you've really brought the party party alive kind of and yeah and uh that's it's a special trait it really is not everybody can do that and i've seen i've seen you do it well yeah well thank you i've had just as much fun playing for five people that show up as i would you know two or three hundred it's you know if the people are into the music i don't care if it's just a handful of people it it really feels more than I, I i like that experience more than just being you know kind of background noise where where people which sometimes happens where you know they're just kind of you're just background noise and i just really like that intimate feeling better so i, I can have just as good a time playing for a few people <laughs> Yeah, no, that's and that's what's also cool about your show with your added drums and and things that you're doing these extra sounds is that you can I've seen pictures of you where you are playing on a larger stage and in a bigger area and you can fill you can fill the larger type venue but you can also do a more intimate venue it gives you really diversity with your with your show. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, thank you for noticing that. Well, I saw you. You played. Uh, well, I saw you played Shooting Star Casino. You probably still do that some, but that's kind of a that's kind of a larger room for just a one man show. But that works really well. I was like, yeah, it is. Uh, I know even in the event center in there. I mean, I think that holds fifteen hundred people. So, I mean, uh, that size of room, it that is quite a bit for a one person show. But you know, heck, you just got to keep on going for it. it. Keeps on working, so you just keep doing it. And turn it up, right? Just turn it up. <laughs> Exactly. You got to fill that noise. Yeah, you got to <laughs> fill that room up. Well, that's exciting to uh, talk to you, Eric. I, don't, I know you got somewhere to be, and everything. Is there anything else you want to add today to the listeners? No, nothing I can think of. Just uh, yeah, if you're a young musician, keep on going. Keep on going. Don't quit. <laughs> you just keep. On, you guys got to keep on doing something, even if it's not the right move. Just keep on making moves, and it will eventually fall into place. That's a good attitude, man. That's a good attitude. That's Eric Raytan on the phone with me today. It's fantastic to have you um, here today on Lunch with Doug. Thank you, Doug. I really appreciate the call. Today's Lunch with Doug podcast is produced by the Music Exerbia Project and made possible by these great businesses. The second edition shop located at 500 East Cherry Street in fabulous Nevada, Missouri. Karen McNair, the friendly neighborhood nutritionist, at 269-267-4644. The Harry Frog Graphics at 150 North Commercial, or call them at 417-381-1077. The Boutique Marketplace, located at 500 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. The Nevada Coin, at 123 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. The Gamers Fusion, 617 East Cherry Street in Nevada, Missouri. The Craft Tea, find them on Food Truck Pub or on Facebook. The Impact Graphics, at 14144 East Highway 54 or call them at 417-283-2056. The Nevada Tobacco and Liquor Store at 125 West Cherry Street on the south side of the Nevada Square. And coming soon, the Red Cherry Alley at 125 West Cherry Street in fantastic Nevada, Missouri.